All right, good evening and welcome. What a beautiful crowd. Buenas noches, bienvenidos. Que... Welcome to tonight's Board of Education meeting. We're glad that each of you are here. Let's all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let's remain standing for a moment of silence, please. All right, you may be seated. Thank you. Pueden sentarse. As we start to our meeting tonight, let's pause to acknowledge that the Hackensack School District occupies the unceded ancestral lands of the Ramapo Muncie Lenape people. We are grateful to be able to learn, work, and gather today, and we continue our commitment to support all underserved and undervalued members of our school community. In accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act, adequate notice of this meeting was advertised in the record, posted at the board office, and filed with the city clerk. I hereby call to order the regular public meeting on April 17th, 2024, in the Hackensack High School Media Center at 6.17 p.m. Ms. Singh, will you uh, please do a roll call for us? Okay. Um, Mr. Carroll? Present. Ms. Harris? Present. Mr. Martin? Present. Mr. Powell? Ms. Pringle? Present. Ms. Somerville? Present. Mr. Stein? Present. Ms. Cordero Alton? Present. Mr. James Vickery? Present. We have a quorum. All right, thank you. So we will start with our student report from Natasha. Okay, on April 24th, the Hackensack High School Chorus will be performing the annual spring concert at Jackson Avenue School at 6 p.m. A huge thank you to the administration and staff for allowing us to relocate as our auditorium is under construction. On April 25th, the annual Spanish induction will take place at 7 p.m. in the library. There will be over 50 new inductees. Spring sports are underway and our teams are off to a great start. Baseball is ranked in the top 20 in the latest county rankings, and volleyball is in the top five for all of New Jersey. On June 1st, the high, the high school is partnering with the city of Hackensack and the Hackensack Environmental Justice Alliance to build a rain garden at the school. More information to follow. All right, thank you. We appreciate it. Now we will move on to our presentation of Teacher of the Year. Teachers of the Good evening. Good evening. Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed colleagues, and especially the incredible Hackensack Public Schools Teacher of the Year and Educational Service Professionals of the Year. Today we gather to celebrate something truly extraordinary. The unwavering dedication, selfless service, and boundless passion of our outstanding educators. Each year we have the privilege to recognize those who exemplify the very essence of what it means to be a teacher and educator, and this year is no exception. To our esteemed educators, your commitment to our students goes beyond the confines of the classrooms. You are not just educators, you are mentors, guides, and beacons of light for every child who walk through your doors. Your tireless efforts to ensure their success, both academically and personally, are nothing short of remarkable. But it doesn't stop there. Your service on behalf of our scholars and their families is a testament to your boundless compassion and empathy. You understand that education extends far beyond the textbooks and the exams. It's about nurturing the whole child, supporting them through challenges and celebrating their triumphs. And let's not forget your selfless giving. Day in and day out, you pour your heart and your soul into your work, often without seeking recognition or reward. 
Your love for teaching shines through in everything that you do, from staying late to helping students to spending your weekends planning and engaging lessons and taking the time to hear the things that concern them the most and being that thought partner. But what perhaps sets you apart is your willingness to go above and beyond. You constantly push the boundaries of what is possible, always striving to make a difference in the lives of your scholars, whether it's organizing extracurricular activities, volunteering in the community, or advocating for educational equity. You never hesitate to step up and make your voice heard. So to our Hackensack Public School Teachers of the Year and Educational Services Professionals of the Year, I offer my heartfelt congratulations. You are not just educators, you are heroes, shaping the futures of our scholars one at a time. So thank you for your unwavering dedication, your boundless compassion, and your relentless pursuit of excellence. You inspire us all to be better, and for that, we are extremely grateful. So at this time, I would like to call the administrative representatives from each school to come and join me as we acknowledge our Teachers of the Year uh, first. So first, I'll begin with ECDC. Thank you, Dr. McBride. Thank you for being here, everyone. I feel a privilege and honor. Can you hear me okay? Yes. yes. I know I do have a loud voice. <laughs> I feel to be a privilege and honor to start with um, an amazing teacher at ECDC, Ms. Dominica D'Angelo. <laughs> I'd like to read my remarks. <laughs> there are many things that I would like to share about Ms. D'Angelo. However, I would like to start with some remarks from the ECDC staff and families. My child loved Ms. D'Angelo. She came in every day in order to be in Ms. D'Angelo's class. What now but a happy, engaged three-year-old a few minutes ago was clinging to their mother's leg begrudgingly to come in on their first day of preschool. This is a common scenario for the first year in Ms. D'Angelo's class. She is the first teacher and often not the first person in these young children's lives that are left when they come in to school. The change is sometimes slow for these children to comprehend, but her smiling face, upbeat personality is welcoming to their new home away from home. She calmly demonstrates to children that they are more capable than they thought they were. They learn how to communicate and be a part of a group bigger than their direct family. They make friends and learn about things, not only about themselves, but the world around them. Miss D'Angelo's charismatic and warm disposition is not only contagious to students, but to staff as well. Whenever anyone needs help with a problem or is having a rough day, Ms. D'Angelo is there with an ear to listen and a warm smile, which brightens our day and makes our day a little happier. And then my final remarks are, Ms. D'Angelo is a creative, enthusiastic, and engaging teacher. She is passionate about teaching and purchases materials to keep students interested in learning. Furthermore, if you walk down the hallway outside Ms. D'Angelo's classroom, you will see student-created birds and their birdhouses, fish in fish bowls, and various other pets. Ms. D'Angelo often volunteers in all aspects of the school environment, from the beginning of the school day to the end of the school day. Ms. D'Angelo always has a smile on her face, which has been contagious to all. Congratulations. Up next, <laughs> Laura McBride. Yeah. And 
I have a few short remarks about Ms. McBride. Um, there are many things I would like to share about Ms. McBride. However, I would like to start with a few remarks from the ECDC staff. Ms. McBride is an exceptional coworker who goes above and beyond within her role. She not only fulfills her role effectively and with fidelity, but she has also taken on additional roles within the school. Her warmth, competence, empathy, and sincerity to support students, staff, and families at ECDC is inspiring and noteworthy. Many individuals can do a job well, but it takes a special person to do a job well and with such tenderness and devotion. Laura McBride wears many hats at ECDC and other schools throughout the district. She is extremely knowledgeable in several areas and is always willing to take on more responsibilities. She goes above and beyond at work and outside of work by offering her free time to assist others. And finally, I'd like to add that Ms. McBride is a hardworking, determined professional. She works well with both staff, students, and families. She attended all family engagement nights, and at the drop of a hat, Ms. McBride is willing to provide translations. <laughs> Furthermore, Ms. McBride's role is multifaceted. She collaborates with everyone, and just like Ms. D'Angelo, always has a contagious smile. Congratulations. Next, we would like to have Fairmount. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Board members, Dr. McBride, colleagues extended family members. What a great day to be here to celebrate incredible educators. This is always one of my favorite times of the year. I get to brag about folks who are about the work. And today, I get to speak of a matriarch in our building. The individual I'm talking about is Ms. Maria Burak. <laughs> so, um, you know, often when we come to these events, you try to write things down and then you think about what you want to say, and I just kind of want to speak uh, from the heart. Um, in this work that we do, we are fortunate to come across great people um, who you respect, who you admire, who you know are about the work. In my two years that I've been at Fairmount, I've had an opportunity to work with Ms. Burak. Always been personable, always been nice to me, and she always focused on her work. Um, when I met her, she was a, um, a power educator working with Alyssa Frascator. And I remember one time Ms. Frascator was running a little late. So I'm like, okay, let's see what happens. Well, Ms. Burak, I'm be known to Ms. Fox teacher. <laughs> and this woman is more than a paraeducator. She's, a, she's an educator. She got the kids all set. By the time Ms. Frasketor came into the classroom, they were already engaged and ready to go. So when we think about Ms. Burak, um, this is a community member who's blue and gold blue. She started out at Nellie K, and then she's been at Fairmount since that time. This is a 25-year veteran, a community member, one of our own. This year, Ms. Burak transitioned to uh, our in-class support working with Mr. Hazel. And every time I go into that classroom, those kids are well-behaved, they are engaged, and you can tell that those kids feel safe and they, they know they, they are in, a, in an environment where they are loved. These are kids who are not necessarily um, you know, possessing all the academic abilities, but they are pushing forward and putting forth that energy and that confidence that some of our kids lack. And under the leadership of Mrs. Burak and Mr. Hazel and her prior experience with Mrs. Frascator, 
all I've been seeing is dynamic educational experiences for our students. That's always what the work is about. And so in trying to learn a little bit more about her, I had just had some folks help me to kind of brag about her a bit tonight. So let me just start by bragging about her. <laughs> Mrs. Burak is in matriarch in the building. When we think about Fairmount, we think about Mrs. Burak. Mrs. Burak has an excellent work ethic and is always willing to assist administrators, teachers, and students. She is flexible in her placement and makes a difference in the classroom. Mrs. Burak has a visible dedication to the students. She makes connections with her students to ensure they feel safe and loved, and she successfully assists students behaviorally and academically. What a gift you are. Students feel comfortable with her and seek assistance from her. She makes a substantial difference in the classroom. Wherever she's been placed, even from her original partner in education when I met her, she's always displaying a positive and strong relationship with the classroom teacher. She's a team player and ensures the classroom teacher is receiving all the help they need. You know, you need a reliable partner when you are supporting students. Mrs. Burak has a willingness to help everyone. In addition, Mrs. Burak has positive relationships with community members. She is from Hackensack, but she's a community member. And Mrs. Burak, we just want to take a moment to say thank you for your service to this community. Not only are you an exemplar, a servant leader, but like Dr. McBride said, you are a hero to all of us. And so for the 2023-2024 school year, we just want to congratulate you as the Educational Services Professional of the Year. Congratulations. <laughs> the next one is a part in education. Ms. Alyssa Frasco. Fras Fras you know you're in a great place when the children of the teachers like you. <laughs> I met this wonderful young man last summer, and we've been friends since. I check up on him, and his mom always lets me know he checks on me, so I'm just glad that Glenn and Dad are here today to celebrate your incredible mom. <laughs> Congratulations, Mrs. Rasmussen, for being the 23-2024 Teacher of the Year from Fairmount School. <laughs> what can I say about Mrs. Rasmussen? High energy, hard worker, great sense of humor. Every time you go into her classroom, whether it's co-teaching or she's leading a class, she is at ground level with students. She uses this term that's become infectious. I've asked her, you know what, we need to transition to calling all of our students that. When she's teaching math, she doesn't say students, friends. She calls them mathematicians. <laughs> and when she says that, you can tell that that infects the kids. It gets them engaged. And they really display a lot of engagement. Ms. Frascator is a member of our, our, our INRS team. She's been a resource teacher starting out from um, Elmwood Park, and then finding a home here at Hackensack. This year, she's working as an in-class support teacher for our grade three students and is really making substantial gains and leaving an indelible mark on our students. Again, when you do this work, you always find safe havens to go to. When I want to get away from the noise and I want to see some dynamic teaching and I want to hear mathematicians, <laughs> I go to a Mr. Frasco's class. And sometimes we'll see each other, and she's always smiling. She's always showing great humor and just always bringing positive energy. Alyssa, it's been an honor to get to know you professionally, to get to know you individually, and to just see the work and the dedication we put into our students and families each and every day. Whenever you've been called upon, you always deliver. So again, I just want to um, acknowledge you and congratulate you for being, and I know I've used this, I don't throw this word around, but when I say exemplar and standard bearers, you only run into those a few times in your life. And she and Maria Burak represent that. 
So with that said, congratulations to this class before. <laughs> Next, we will have Fannie M. Hiller School. Good evening, everyone. Yep, that age, glasses are on. <laughs> Judge me not. Wrote the speech so I don't talk too much because I can talk forever about my crew. So good evening, board trustees, families, parents, colleagues, friends, and the littles that came here to celebrate your special person. This evening we are here to celebrate Mrs. Rosa Sacamano for the Educational Services Professional of the Year. I am Dr. Judith Soto, principal of Fannie Meyer Hiller School, where together we inspire, engage, encourage our scholars to shine. I stand before you to pay tribute to you, Ms. Rosa Sacamano. I already lost my place. <laughs> A pillar of our educational community who has devoted 20 years of her life to the betterment of our school system. For two decades, you have been the guiding light an unwavering source of support and a compassionate soul who has left an indelible mark on the lives you touch. Your warmth and genuine concern for every child in your care are not just commendable traits, they are the essence of who you are. Whether it's offering a comforting word to a tearful kindergartner or patiently guiding a struggling student through their learning, Mrs. Sakamano, your kindness knows no bounds. 20 years is not a short, uh, just a measure of time. It is a testament to your passion. In, every, in an ever-changing world where trends come and go, your steadfast presence has been a source of stability and an inspiration for all of us fortunate enough to work alongside of you. This evening, we honor you, this is Rosa Sacamano, a paraprofessional extraordinaire whose legacy will continue to inspire generations to come. Thank you for your 20 years of selfless service, and here's to more years of making a difference in the lives of our scholars. Oh, this one's gonna be fun, okay. <laughs> Next is our Teacher of the Year, Mrs. Carmela Zuccaro. I wrote a little something for you, Mrs. Zuccaro. This evening, we come together to celebrate the embodiment of kindness, dedication, and unwavering commitment of Mrs. Carmela Zuccaro to both Hiller School students and the Hiller School community as a whole. I would also like to take a moment to acknowledge all 56 of the Tripodi family members that came out today to support their daughters. Their daughters, Carmela, Carmela D'Angelo is their daughter? Of Dominica D'Angelo, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, it's like the Italian family here, Ms. Rosa Sacamano. I see a trend, I see there. Uh, Dominica D'Angelo and Carmela Zucaro, but I also want to include Rosa, Rosaria Luciano, who got the Positivity Award. Oh, Where is her? We will celebrate all. Where is she? There she is. There she is. I heard she's getting a T-shirt that says, "I'm next." Thank you, Chipotle family. You did good. I wish to celebrate the remarkable career and contributions of a true gem in our educational landscape. Beside me, not behind me. Mrs. Zuccaro, as we gather to honor you, allow me a moment to share your journey. I won't make you cry. So here's the funny story of the overachiever, Ms. Zuccaro. I asked Ms. Zuccaro, Ms. Sakamano, can you just send me how many years you've worked in the system and maybe a couple things? Mrs. Zuccaro wrote her own speech. <laughs> I said, you don't have to write your speech, I got it. 
Just a couple of things you want me to know. So I wrote this speech <coughs> using some of your speech. Carmela Zuccaro's story is one of dedication, passion, <laughs> I could use my lunchroom voice. Okay. <laughs> Carmela Zuccaro's story is one of dedication, passion, and unwavering commitment to the betterment of, the, of young lives. A proud graduate of Hackensack High School herself, she has returned to her community, not just as a teacher, but as a guiding force for generations of students. It was in 1999 that Ms. Zuccaro, back then Carmela Chipotle, returned to Hackensack answering the call to serve as a fourth grade leave replacement. Little did we know then that her presence would become an integral part of our school's fabric for over two decades. Since that fateful day, Mrs. Zuccaro has not only taught her students the fundamentals of reading, writing, and arithmetic, but she has also instilled in them a sense of safety, belonging, and love. Her recommendation by Mrs. Zuccaro's wife <laughs> for a teaching assistant position at Hackensack Cares speaks volumes about Mrs. Zuccaro's character and the high regard in which she has held, is held by her peers. Mrs. Zuccaro, your commitment to serving not only within the confines of our little school but also in the broader community is a testament of your altruism and compassion. Your creativity is evident in everything you do, from your cafe-like work area in your classroom, your amazing bulletin boards, and your willingness to buy, create, and donate anything to add that special something to any event that we have. The tents, the balloon arches that just appear, and the huge planters for outside of our school to beautify our grounds. Your dedication to your students goes beyond the classroom walls as you clearly understand that education is not just about imparting knowledge, but also about nurturing young minds and their spirits. You have created a safe and inclusive environment where every student feels valued, respected, and loved. Your kindness, empathy, and genuine concern for the well-being of our students shine through everything you do. As we look back on your journey, let us not only celebrate your accomplishment, but also express the heartfelt gratitude for the countless lives you have touched and the countless hearts you have saved. Mrs. Zuccaro, your unwavering commitment to our students and your tireless efforts to make our school a better place have not gone unnoticed. You are a shining example of excellence, compassion, and dedication, and we are immensely grateful for all that you do. You are a beacon of light in our educational community who, whose legacy will continue to inspire generations to come. Thank you, Ms. Carmela Zuccaro. For the 24 year, oh, I'm almost done. <laughs> I'm almost done. But imagine if I didn't write it. Thank you, Ms. Carmela Zuccaro, for the 24 years of selfless service. Here's to your continued partnership in making memories and making a difference. Next, we will have Hackensack Middle School. Uh, Mr. Bradley. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. It is a pleasure to stand before you this evening to talk about Mr. Jackie Bradley. Join me, Mr. Bradley. Mr. Bradley is our Educational Services Personnel of the Year. Mr. Collado, there's some balloons. You want to grab these balloons for Mr. Bradley, please? So what do the drums say about Mr. Jackie Bradley? 
The drum said he is one of the best dressed <laughs> professionals at Hackensack Middle School with his New York swag. <laughs> the drum say that he has a warm smile every morning when the children greet him at 730. The drum say that Mr. Bradley is dedicated to our school community, participating in assemblies, concerts while playing his drums. The drum say that Mr. Jackie Bradley serves as a mentor for our young men's empowerment group. The drum say that Mr. Bradley is a standard of excellence. The drums say he is a kind man. He is friendly. He is love in action at Hackensack Middle School. It is often said that a paraeducator is the heartfelt hero using their talents to help students discover their own Mr. Bradley, dedicating their time and energy every day to the students in their care, which you do, and doing it all the while while smiling, meeting the individual needs of the many that you touch. So Mr. Bradley, we thank you for beating your drums and honoring our students at Hackensack Middle School. And next up, I'd like to welcome Ms. D. Kalman, our Hackensack Middle School Teacher of the Year. It is often so refreshing to be able to work with people who your children have had as a teacher, and that is Ms. Kalman. She is our local Not his fault, I didn't give him clear direction. This is Mr. Collado, our seventh grade assistant principal. We have Dr. Tara Skiba, our sixth grade assistant principal. And we have also Ms. Johanna Espinal, our fifth grade assistant principal. Mr. Johnson is out celebrating his birthday. So, Ms. Kalman, Ms. D. Kalman, is, it's often been said that it's the teacher that makes the difference and not the classroom. And that is what Ms. Kalman stands for. She is our local resident STEMinist. She is a STEM technology teacher at Hackensack Middle School like none other. <laughs> Ms. Kalman has engaging lessons that are student-centered. She's globally minded and locally conscious. She is the advisor and the, um, the, the first uh, advisor for the GSA, the Gay, Straight, uh, Gay Student Alliance at Hackensack Middle School. And this is such a wonderful accomplishment because that was started because students came to her and expressed a need to want a safe space. And that just shows you the kind of educator that Ms. Kalman is. In addition to being the advisor for the GSA, Ms. Kalman was awarded the It Gets Better grant for two years in a row, $10,000 for our students. And with that grant, we have had speakers, assemblies, and get this, the students are going to see The Wiz on Broadway. I didn't get invited, I'm just putting that in there. But because of the It Gets Better grant and Ms. Kalman's work, that is what our students are allowed to do. Not just that, Ms. Kalman, you are the wizard behind the curtain. If you enjoy any of the social media that goes on at Hackensack Middle School, the credit belongs to this lady here. She is often touting how the wonderful things that happen at Hackensack Middle School before I even get a chance to do so. And it's because she is our content creator, always thinking of how we can elevate what we're doing at Hackensack Middle School. And for that, we are so very grateful. You encourage all students, Ms. Kalman, and welcome them into a safe space and a judgment-free zone. And if you know anything about middle schoolers, that's what they need. They need to be in a space where they're not judged by the color of their skin or the content of their character, but they are just judged and loved for who they are and that is what Ms. Kalman does. 
D. Kalman, you are pride, passion, and purpose in action, and we thank you for everything that you do. Next, we will have Hackensack High School. Good evening, everyone. It's so nice to see everyone here this evening. Uh, Dr. McBride, President James Vickery, trustees, uh, family, friends, and colleagues. Thank you so much for being here to recognize, support, and honor our prestigious colleagues. I would like to call forward Mr. Kasim Gaines. It is a pleasure to recognize the accomplishments of our Teacher Educator of the Year at Hackensack High School. On behalf of Principal Montesano, who could not be here due to illness, I swear I didn't put anything in his coffee so that I could <laughs> have this spotlight. Um, <laughs> and our entire administrative team, it is a privilege to highlight some of your accomplishments and why you are so worthy of this distinction. Mr. Gaines, for those of you who do not know, is a valuable member of the English department where he has worked diligently to incorporate curriculum texts that represent the many diverse voices and experiences of our school population. He is also responsible for the development and instruction of the race and representation course that our students really thrive in. He is responsible for making students feel valued, appreciated, and welcomed in the learning space. Specifically, the students talk about his empathy and enthusiasm, that your lessons are ones that they see themselves in, their experiences, and their families. I have heard many students say that his classroom is one of the few places that I feel safe. This is the type of rapport that is the goal of every educator. Additionally, Mr. Gaines has delivered many informative professional development sessions with me <laughs> <laughs> as a member of the district's equity team. His collaboration and insight and after hours, I'm gonna say that even though you're union president. <laughs> um, <laughs> Don't get me in trouble. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Focus on cultural competence in order to promote and foster an inclusive learning environment for our staff and our students in our entire community. Mr. Gaines is a key contributor to this community. He is the director of Hackensack's High School Performing Arts Program. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> he has staged many, well, many wonderful productions. He is also a prolific author, for those of you who don't know and his books inspire our students and our families to read about pop culture. And he is also a representation of the many things that you can be. You don't have to fit yourself in one box. You can produce, you can direct, you can teach, you can do a myriad of things, whatever your heart's desire. So thank you for being that in truth for our students every day. So for these reasons and many more, your dedication and commitment is being highlighted tonight. So on behalf of the principal, Mr. Montesano, Ms. Lozano, Mr. King, Mr. Greenwood, and myself, Ms. Adams, we wanna thank you personally for all you continue to do, the support you continue to extend, and the difference you continue to make.
At this time, I would like to call Ms. Cara Farazano for her award recognition and her accomplishment. Uh, Ms. Farazano is being uh, recognized tonight as our Educational Services Professional of the Year. And we would like to highlight some of your contributions, particularly the reason why the students wanted Ms. Farazano selected and highlighted for this distinct honor. Ms. Farazano has been an impactful member of the guidance department at Hackensack High School since 2015. The students say, that they are grateful for a counselor who helps them advocate for themselves and supports them with difficult conversations. In your nomination, they expressed how difficult it is to approach an adult, sometimes even their parents, with issues and conversations. This is particularly challenging when they are unsure, nervous about what their parents may say and how they may feel afterwards. This is why speaking to you is so important, according to them. They are more confident and prepared to tackle problems. It is your approachability, friendliness, and sense of humor that they cite as essential elements that contribute to the relationships that you built with them and your colleagues. A colleague expressed that there was a time she was extremely overwhelmed with the student and you provided a non-judgmental ear to listen and problem solve with her. Your caring heart for anyone who reaches out to you for guidance, advice, or resources is always at the forefront of how you engage with colleagues, students, and parents. It is for this reason that the students expressed that counselors should have more time to just talk and not have to do all the other stuff because some of us don't have adults who we can talk to and be honest with and still feel good about ourselves afterwards. It is your compassion and student advocacy that was recognized and noticed by our school community, making you worthy of this award for your dedication and commitment to anyone who walks in your office seeking assistance. Thank you for making mental health and self-care an important part of the conversation for our students and staff. Congratulations and keep up the good work. Next we will have Jackson Avenue. Good afternoon and congratulations to all the nominees. My name is Almania Mejia and I am the proud, proud, proud special ed teacher at Jackson Avenue. Woo! <laughs> I, um, Mr. Moran asked me to come and speak on behalf of the staff and himself about our nominees. So first I would like to call Ms. Pyro. I forgot my So first I would like to say, Ms. Pyro is received every day in school with a genuine love and smile from the children's faces. They love her so, so much. They're constantly hugging her, asking her for advice or asking her for help. We thank her so much for all her amazing contribution to our social, social media. Jazz is home, really, really a home for Ms. Pyro. All her, is, Jackson is close to her heart since Mr. Pyro went to Jackson Avenue School and all her children went to Jackson Avenue School. It is really dear to your heart. And grands and grandsons, that's right, thank you. Mr. Uh, Mr. Moran uh, loves talking about Comet Pride and no one, and no one embodies Comet Pride like Ms. Pyro. And for that, Ms. Pyro, we today are honored to celebrate you. Thank you. Woo! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And 
um, I also am proud, I work with both Ms. Pyro and our Teacher of the Year nominee, Ms. Lomax. Woo! Lomax. Uh, we are co-teachers and we work every single day with our amazing students. So Ms. Lomax is, is distinguished. Uh, her high school, I have a, a story to tell. Hackensack High School came over to visit us and one of the, uh, the students wanted to come and say hi and I was the testimony to this. They said, Ms. Ms. Lomax, I want you to know that you are still my favorite teacher. And this was a senior. You're my favorite teacher. So then I said, well, guess what? She's being nominated. And the students started to cry. She goes, you deserve it. And yes, you do deserve it. Let's give her a hand of applause. It's so beautiful. With that said, Ms. Lomax is our cheerleader at Jackson Avenue. She cheers academically, socially, and emotionally. She has supported me in taking parallel teaching to a new level. Thank you. And as a testimony for this, if you walk through the hallways of Jackson, you might hear a chant, B-C-E, B-C-E. Then they go, B-T-E, B-T-E. The students have come up with this chant because it says, best teacher ever. Aww. And we honor you today for it. Thank you. And before we welcome our last lead, uh, school, we just want to take a moment to, to honor and celebrate the return of Mrs. Whitaker uh, from Parker Elementary. We are grateful to have her back leading, advocating, and loving on the children and families of Parker Elementary School. It is truly, truly a pleasure to be here. I have never missed so many days of school in my entire life. Um, and still have a lot more days, but I don't, pl I don't plan to use them. Um, but at this time before I speak, I'm gonna bring up Dr. Galliana, who has been in my stead and the acting principal for six months. So he's going to present the first nominee. Thank you, Mrs. Whitaker. Those weren't small shoes I had to fill, but I did, I did my best. I did my best. Um, tonight, I have the honor to present the ESP of the year for Nellie K. Parker School, which is Miss Laura Mujica. Um, today, it is with great honor and admiration that we gather to recognize one of the pillars of our school community, Miss Laura Mujica. Ms. Mujica embodies the very essence of dedication, reliability, creativity, and unwavering commitment to our school. From the early hours of the morning to the twilight moments of the evening, she stands as a beacon of dependability and reliability. As she arrives promptly at 7.15 each day for the before school program, she brings with her not only a warm smile, but also an unparalleled work ethic that sets the tone for the entire day ending at 6 p.m. because she works the after school program as well. When the after school, oh, I think I said that already. Her <laughs> presence is not just felt, but cherished by all who have the privilege of working alongside her. But perhaps what truly dis distinguishes her is the value she brings to our school community. She is, simply, she is not simply a paraprofessional. She is a trusted confidant, a reliable teammate, and a passionate mentor to both the self-contained students in her class and staff alike. Her contributions extend far beyond the confines of her role, enriching the lives of all who have the privilege of knowing and working with her. So as we gather here today, let us take a moment to express our deepest gratitude to this extraordinary individual. Let us thank her for her unwavering dedication, her boundless creativity, and her invaluable presence within our school community. 
May we continue to be inspired by her example and strive to emulate the qualities that make her such a cherished member of our team. So I'm also going to read um, the nomination that was given to her, but since everybody's telling stories, I'm going to tell a story too. Um, you know, paraprofessionals do a little bit of everything in the classroom, right? As, as people spoke, they teach, they guide, they mentor, but they do all the little things. So one of the stories I, I, I want to tell about Ms. Mujica is we had a fire drill. She works in a kindergarten self-contained class with students with autism, and it was a cold day. And the fire alarm goes off, and everybody goes outside, and now I'm worried about the little ones without their coats. So I run around to the back where the kindergarten class is coming out, and I see her class coming out without their coats, um, led by the teacher, Mrs. Gambardella. So now I'm thinking, like, what am I going to do to get these kids warm? And just about, th not even 30 seconds after the class came, here comes Ms. Mujica with, like, 50, <laughs> dragging the 15 coats it took for the students to stay warm. So, you know, it's that commitment, it's that teamwork. You get the kids out, I'm gonna get their coats, let's do it, and, and I'm pr I wasn't there to witness it. I was happy to see her come out with the coats, but I could tell it probably wasn't even a spoken word. It was like, you got them, I got this, let's go. And it's just the value that all our paraprofessionals do, um, and just one example of what you did uh, that really makes working in schools, working at L.A.K. Parker School with people like Ms. Mujica just a wonderful experience for the kids and the adults but I will read what the nomination said. Okay, Ms. Mujica's nomination reads, Laura Mujica has been working for the Hackensack School District as a paraprofessional for the past 20 years. She is an extremely hardworking paraprofessional. She always interacts with students in a kind and patient manner. In addition, she sets high expectations for all of her students. She is highly trained in providing her students with the support they need in the classroom. The students have fun when they interact with Ms. Mujica. She is able to help her students reach their goals and be successful in the classroom. She brings a positive attitude to the classroom every day. She shares her creative ideas for both the classroom activities and the behavioral support strategies with her colleagues. She is an artist and always dedicates her time to decorating her classroom, the school hallways, and other colleagues' classrooms in the school. She is a wonderful para paraprofessional and L.A.K. Parker School is very blessed to have her. So congratulations, Ms. Mujica. about Ms. Mojica, she doesn't only work during, from September to June. In July, as soon as we get out, she's calling me to see what is the theme for next year so I can start the bulletin boards. So she pushes on every aspect. I have this, this distinctive honor of presenting our next candidate, Mr. Anthony Bennett. That's how I'm greeted every day. Okay. I have to say before I read anything that I'm very hard to please, if you know me. So when we posted for a physical education teacher, it took me three rounds of posting to find the right fit for Nellie K. Parker School because I don't settle. And so Ms. the superintendent said, well, you have all these applicants. I do, but they don't fit my needs for my children. Mr. Bennett, the first time we met, I knew he was the one for Nellie K. Parker School and for the students at Hackensack. So I wasn't surprised when I got back and I knew and I was told that he was the nominee. His colleague wrote, I nominate Mr. Bennett because he is a friendly co-worker who is always full of energy. 
Mr. Bennett is extremely patient, kind, and understanding of all students, especially the students with special needs. Every year I watch him with my students and I am just in awe of how he handles them. When you see Mr. Bennett, I promise you will see students running up to him just to give him a hug or a high five. Thank you, Mr. Bennett, for treating the students at Nellie K. Parker School, the greatest school in the world, I have to put that in there, <laughs> with extra TLC. It does not go unnoticed. Therefore, I am thrilled to present this award to Mr. Bennett for Teacher of the Year. He is the heartbeat of the physical education program, bringing an unparalleled level of enthusiasm, dedication, compassion to everything he does. His infectious energy and genuine love for his students creates an environment where every child feels valued and support it. He doesn't have to be assigned more than duty. He's outside. He doesn't have to be asked to escort a child to class. He just does it because he wants to make sure that they feel safe and they get to where they need to be. Mr. Bennett is not just a teacher, but a true team player, always willing to lend a helping hand and to collaborate with his colleagues and administration to enhance the learning experience for all children. It does my heart glad. I am happy glad. <laughs> I am happy glad that Mr. Bennett was chosen as the teacher of the year. Congratulations. <laughs> and, I, and I love you dearly. My grandmother always said, give people their flowers where they can smell them. Yeah. So we are grateful for having the opportunity to honor all of you. So congratulations once again. So as you all know, we have adopted a uh, new structure in our board meetings to honor our unsung heroes, those individuals who go above and beyond in every field, from our custodians to our uh, paras to everyone who's, so, so, who works in Hackensack Public Schools. And so tonight we will be honoring our next SOAR Award for the month of April. And so now I'll turn it over to our president, Mr. Scott Vickery. Good evening. Good evening. So this month, we um, want to honor and thank, and I want to make sure I say our name correctly. Thank you. <laughs> Why don't you say, don't you say the name? And I'll... The SOAR Award goes to Mr. Barjam Kaplani, <laughs> head custodian at Hackensack Middle School. I know this gentleman as the person with magical powers because I have never been to the middle school 
where he has not been there to greet me with a smiling face and ready to do anything. And whenever I'm ever in need of, it's like he reads my mind. I don't know what it is, but, or maybe it's just the dumb look on my face. <laughs> That's probably what it is, but he knows that I need something. And he always comes and makes sure that, that whatever it is, and what I love about this gentleman is he always asks about students first. It's always about what the kids need. And whatever that is, he's going to make sure it happens. So thank you, Mr. Kaplani, for what you do. Bammy, come on up here. Charles Osgood has a little story that I'd like to tell you. It's a story called Everybody, Somebody, Anybody, and Nobody. It serves as a reminder of the importance of execution, accountability, and finding your purpose. And here's the story. Everybody, somebody, anybody, and nobody. A team had four members called everybody, somebody, anybody, and nobody. There was an important job to be done. Everybody was sure that somebody would do it. Anybody could have done it, but nobody did it. Somebody got angry about that because it was everybody's job. Everybody thought anybody could do it. Nobody realized that it's everybody's job. Everybody wouldn't do it. It ended up that everybody blamed somebody when nobody did what anybody could have done. And so when I saw this story, I could not think of anybody better than Mr. Kaplani because he is everybody. He is always on time in our school, available to our students. And just to give you a little story about Bami, he treats us to lunch. At the end of the quarter, he treats the custodians, the administrative staff, the supervisors. And so I had to really think hard about how I would get him here. So if you know anything about Hackensack Middle School, we have a little issue with the HVAC. So I told Mr. Uh, Bammy, I said, you have to come to the meeting because you have to talk about the heat and the air in the building. He says, I got it. I'm on it. <laughs> I explain it, Dr. Whiting, I explain it. <laughs> it's, he said, you lied to me. <laughs> so that just speaks to who he is. I talk about pride, passion, and purpose, and he embodies that, even without even just anticipating everything. From the flowers in the front of the building, when we have an idea about what we want to do, Bammy is there in the morning, in the evening, on the weekends. And so, Bammy, really, we appreciate everything that you do. You are love in action. You exemplify what it means to be an honorable man who loves children, who gives up your heart daily. And when Ms. Parchman called yesterday to say that you were the SOAR nominee, I was so thrilled to share it with the staff and with the supervisors because you are so very deserving. You SOAR and you go above and beyond, and you lift us up like eagle's wings. And so thank you for everything you do, and congratulations. So up next, we will hear from our superintendent for his report. Good evening again. Is this thing on? Everybody hear me? Good evening. Uh, so before I go into the superintendent report, just want to acknowledge that this is Autism Month. 
and we want to honor our, our scholars who have autism. And it's a very special and, and personal month for me. I have an amazing, beautiful seven-year-old niece who I actually will be on Saturday going to see her artwork uh, because she has made such significant strides. So we just want to honor all of our autistic students this month. Um, I am also an English person, so I, we also want to acknowledge April is Poetry Month. So our scholars have been writing some amazing poetry, and we are celebrating their creativity in that aspect as well. And with that said, I'll dive right into the superintendent's report. So for our enrollment numbers for this, this month, we have currently 5,301 students, and we have an attendance rate of 97.38. Excellent. Our kids are coming to school. So we are grateful to our families, our parents, and our teachers who are getting them there. Our residency report for the month of March. We have five residency cases received, uh, 37 to year to date, verified zero, 15 year to date, in-home visits unverified five, and 22 year to date. Our harassment, intimidation, and bullying report, we have a total of three that fit the HIV definition. We had three that classified as inconclusive, zero where there was no evidence of HIV, eight that did not fit HIV definition for a total of 14 HIV cases. And that concludes the superintendent report. All right, thank you, Dr. McBride. So now we will move forward with our public comments portion. The board not only welcomes your comments, but we want to hear them. So I ask that all participants sign in. When it's your turn, I ask that you state the following. Your name, municipality, any group that you might be, be affiliated with. If you list more than one, I'm gonna ask that you please clarify which group that you're speaking from. Um, each member has a limit of three minutes. Please direct all comments to the presiding officer, which is me tonight. All responses that are appropriate to be responded to will be held to the end of public comments. Uh, so whoever is up first, we're ready. Chris, is there anybody online? Okay. Hang on just one second after Mike here. We will get somebody online. Just one second.
families and children, they need a lot more support. They don't have enough. Um, getting a para who is not certified or qualified or have the credentials to deal with crisis and behavior issues, it is not a solution. It is just a band-aid on a bigger issue. Um, Dr. McBride, thank you so much for meeting with us, the parents, for allowing us the space to provide uh, our uh, feedback and concerns and, and how we feel about the changes that need to be brought about this department. Um, we hope that now that you have a better understanding of what's going on and what we parents need for our children, um, we can count on you to work on bringing those much, much needed changes. The special need children, they need our help. They are the population that need it the most and we are failing them. So as a parent, I am begging you to please place the proper urgency on these children. We don't want them to fall off the crack and then not thrive. We need to do better. And we're asking you to please, please, please do better. Thank you. Good evening. Donna West, a Hackensack resident and employee. Sorry, the pen's not working. Okay. What hat are you going to wear today with your comments? Um, I'm still wearing the president comment, the hat. Okay. okay. Uh, I want to first of all congratulate all of the honorees. Uh, you represent what is the best of the Hackensack Education Association and just the Hackensack School District in general. It is an honor to have even served as your president. So I am really, really uh, happy to congratulate all of you. I was remiss in not uh, congratulating Diana De Jesus last month, so I apologize and I want to extend congratulations to her for receiving the SOAR award last month. This will be my last meeting as HEA president after serving for six years. It has been a great honor, but I am even more honored to announce that Kasim Gaines will succeed me as president and Tom Terzano will serve as our new second VP. Um, I do expect that they will still um, do the work that needs to be done and I will continue to come to these meetings as well to speak now as myself. Okay. Um, Mr. Vickery, I do need to address this to you specifically tonight. Um, and I don't want to sour the mood, but I must. There are things happening at two of our elementary schools that I am sure that you are aware of. There are things happening with our bilingual and special ed departments that I am sure that you are aware of. And so I'm going to actually quote a little bit from the Bible and I'll call you King David and I'll stand here as Nathaniel. And I will say that you are the man because you know that these things are happening. And if you are not going to tell the emperor that he is not wearing any clothes, then I am going to continue to come to these meetings and make you as uncomfortable and disappointed and discouraged as many of my members feel at this time, especially at those two elementary schools where I know you know what is happening. Ms. Harris, I want to apologize to you. All of these years that I have served, I have been made to feel like you were wrong. The, com the community was made to feel like you were wrong. I thank you for always speaking up. Ms. Somerville, I challenge you to please keep speaking up because I know that there are things that you don't always know, but I know if you did know, you would speak up. And so I just ask tonight that just like was said from that parent, I believe, please be more aware of what is happening and help our school district to do what we need to do especially with the things that you know are taking place. Have a good night. The pen works. <laughs> Uh, 
uh, Cassine Gaines, um, Hackensack High School educator, um, we all wear different hats at the same time. Well, but we're going to need you to say which one you're speaking from tonight. I, I, tonight, I'm speaking as an educator. Okay. As an educator, which is um, who I am first and foremost. Um, I want to echo Donna's comments about congratulating all of my colleagues who have won their respective rewards today. And um, we say often that the teachers are the backbone of a school district. Um, we are the ones who first see the look on a kid's face when they get a good grade, um, when they get a boo-boo and need a Band-Aid, um, when they do well on a project that they were nervous about, um, when their friend doesn't want to sit with them in the cafeteria and they have big feelings about it and they need someone to talk to. And we see all of it. And I just want to remind everyone that in all of these presentations, what I heard a lot of were stories. I heard about the impact that educators had on kids from a narrative perspective. No one said so-and-so is educator of the year because of an SGO score or because of the number of artifacts they submitted for domain four. No one said these kids remember what they got on a state assessment or what they did in terms of the number of test prep activities. We remember how people make us feel and how people inspire us. And it was so wonderful to come in today and see one of my former students, Andres, here making sure that I was safe and we were all safe. And I was reminded of how we don't always get to see where our kids end up, but we have to go in every single day and make sure that we try our best to make sure that our kids have a good experience and a good story to tell, and that someone can tell a good story about us as educators in the classroom. Um, I think about this so often because in high school, I have the luxury of having the kids exit be a little bit closer so they can get back in touch and say, this is what I'm doing. And I was reminded of that this week, um, yesterday actually, in fact, where we had a department meeting and we were prepping for SGOs and I missed a phone call from a st former student, uh, been gone several years, and they were calling to let me know, former drama student actually, that they were just cast in a show with Alan Cumming and they had just auditioned for him personally and got the role. And he was so excited and I was so excited that in his round of phone calls, he called me. And I just want to remind us that when we talk about the impact, as someone said, it is not about number. It is not about. Anybody else in the room? Good evening. Can you hear me? Hello? Can anyone hear me? Okay, thank you. Um, good evening, Danielle Jackson, Hackensack resident and Fairmount school teacher. I'll be speaking as an educator tonight. Congratulations. Congratulations to all the honorees tonight. 
We often talk about how to protect students from harassment, intimidation, and bullying, but staff deal with these issues too. And I'd like to know what's in place to protect staff members. Thank you. Good evening, um, Tom Trezano. Uh, I'm speaking as uh, the health and safety chair for the HEA this evening. Uh, I wanna make sure that everybody knows um, I really applaud the very, very kind words the administration ended up um, using to celebrate the honorees this evening. I thought that was absolutely fantastic. Um, those colleagues of mine end up giving quite a bit. Um, they end up crossing a quite a few personal boundaries in order to do the job that they do. And um, they are applauded for that. Um, and that is, uh, you know, I think a, a very nice thing that you take the time out and you recognize every single one of them. Uh, my uh, concerns are, are pretty much about staffing this evening. Um, and uh, the idea is that if we end up having as safe a, a community as we possibly can, Sometimes that safety comes in numbers and um, we wanna make sure that we end up having uh, certificated staff or proper, proper or appropriate staff in the positions um, that we can um, employ them in, utilize all their fantastic skills and you know, find uh, sometimes wonderful diamonds in the rough um, and you know, allow them to hone their skills over time so that someday they too can be honorees. Um, of course, uh, I'm speaking about certificated uh, educators. I mean, that's an important aspect of our profession, it's an important aspect of our community. Um, you know, the folks in attendance and those being honored uh, clearly end up being, um, you know, central cogs to the, to the machine that is the Hackensack public school system. Uh, another thing that I have phoned in before about, um, I've spoken at length with people about, is uh, making sure that we end up having uh, proper certificated nursing staffing on premises at all of our schools and sometimes maybe doubling up the effort at certain schools where there is a greater population. Um, I'm pretty sure that uh, any additions in that particular regard would be very, very welcome and make um, our schools much more safe and much more able to handle uh, particular emergency situations. Uh, the third thing in terms of health and safety, it's always important to remember that we have to have clean schools as well. And I oftentimes wonder if we have enough appropriate staff um, in the custodians uh, um, union. Um, basically, uh, I took a look at the agenda. There seemed to be a number of substitute hires, but no additional staff being brought on. And so I would ask uh, the board to consider additional hires in that regard so the schools can end up uh, functioning a little bit more smoothly. And then, uh, and then the last, um, also part of our contingent, part of the honorees this evening, uh, hiring full-time paras ends up being a very important piece. They are uh, very, very central and essential in many of the classes in which we uh, teach, and those paras can't be ignored for the importance that they end up, uh, you know, the, the efforts they put in and the amount that they contribute uh, to the community at large. So uh, those are uh, four requests. It's mainly staffing, and the ultimate goal is to get people into appropriate positions and not ask for the current staff to do more, but rather appropriately place staff in places where they can end up uh, creating a tremendous benefit for the uh, the people that we come into contact with, You know, helping them grow, helping them learn, and helping them become more excellent than they are. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Tony Jackson, Hackensack teacher, um, Hackensack parent. Um, I, I don't know that I can take off any of those hats, but I, I, I guess I speak to you primarily as a teacher. Um, I want to say congratulations to all of the honorees tonight. Uh, I want to say congratulations to those who were nominated or, or even had a, a comment from uh, a parent or a comment from a family member for a student that showed their appreciation because 
uh, you know, you are doing just as important a job as those who are in the spotlight, but shout out to those who got their flowers tonight. Um, to my illustrious leader, shout out to Lillian Whitaker for coming back. Um, she got back and she is in full step, everybody. So she is making the rounds, she is being supportive and it is wonderful to see you back. Um, uh, I wanted to additionally say uh, that I appreciate this platform where we can speak. Um, I know that there is often a lot of focus. I mean, we get reminded often that we shouldn't speak to the media. We shouldn't, you know, we should make sure that the messaging of the district is is strong and is focused. And I feel like it's kind of lost sometimes. Um, I feel like that feels very protective. It doesn't feel very uniting to me. And so I noticed that within the last two meetings, uh, there was local coverage um, where a, a writer wrote about comments that were made at the board meeting both times. And so to any teachers who are listening as well, to any community members, there are people who are listening. And so you have this opportunity to share, uh, piggybacking on what my colleague Donna said, there are things that are happening that are not right. There are things that are happening that need to be addressed and corrected. And you have an opportunity here to make people aware. So please utilize this platform. And to the board, I would say, I feel like in the past, if I were to write something to the board, I would have something, I would have a response. Um, I feel like when it goes into the minutes now, people can give impassioned pleas and talk about issues that they're dealing with. And it will be a footnote. It might be three sentences, teacher disgruntled. And I don't think that that shows that you are listening at all. So please consider that, consider that what we are saying, if you are celebrating us and saying that we are so important and that our voices are valid, you have to back that up. And so that is one way that you can do that is to substantively address the things that we are saying and let us know, even if you can't give us every detail about how things are being worked out, that we are and that steps are being taken. Thank you very much. Good evening. Are you able to hear me? Okay, <laughs> wonderful. Uh, my name is Daniel Jackson. I'm a Hackensack resident and Fairmount school teacher. I will be speaking as an educator tonight. Congratulations to all the honorees tonight. We often talk about how to protect students from harassment, intimidation, and bullying. But staff deal with these issues too. And I'd like to know what's in place to protect staff members. Thank you. All right, anybody else? Uh, Chris, online? So before you go into yours, I, I would just like to say that I think that this is a great opportunity. Um, I'll quickly, Martinez, I know there's a second part to that, Rose, um, for um, bringing your comments. The, the superintendent is here, so he will um, follow up with that. Um, Ms. West, um, I'm sad that this is your last time. Uh, to address, I mean, I know you'll address the board as as a as a um, teacher or whatever, um, but as our board president, and we look forward to Mr. Gaines as um, you're the new incoming union president. I'm not sure what you're referencing. Um, I will tell you, it feels very loaded to me. So that you're welcome to talk to me about what the specific issues are. It seems like you may know 
trustee here, so it would be your obligation to bring it forward if you know something that is a problem? I, or think, I think we've had many conversations with certain people that you can talk to them yourself. I, I have no idea what, nothing well, was. don't ask me about Nothing was said in that conversation that. you've had, so don't point at me. <laughs> nothing was said in that conversation that, that alludes to anything. So we'll have to figure that out at whatever time. Um, And I guess we'll go to you. Good evening again. So I've just ended my 100 days uh, in this particular role. And so I, I'm reminded of when I first came to greet you all before I signed my contract. And I gave people a glimpse as to who I am, where I come from, and what I expect. And so I want to reiterate some of those pieces as to why I came to Hackensack Public Schools. Uh, one being this commitment to excellence. Another being this culture of pride and collaboration. And so as I'm meeting with parents, I'm meeting with students, I'm meeting with teachers, I'm meeting with board members, I'm meeting with a variety of people as I'm also learning uh, the landscape of Hackensack to help support me in leading the district forward. I'm gaining a lot of data. And I wanna talk about some of the things that I even heard tonight that align to some of the actions that are happening. When I came, I was very clear that I don't do low expectations. I am not here to keep things as they were. I don't ascribe to the status quo. Does that mean that some things will change? Absolutely. Because when you chose me, that was communicated, that I was coming to do a work, number one, on behalf of children first. And I wanna reiterate that, because oftentimes I'm in conversations where that doesn't seem to be the priority. And let me, let me, let me also clarify, I love, I appreciate, I am grateful for all the amazing adults who work on behalf of children. And yes, you are my priority, but my top priority are those individuals who have not gotten the things that they needed to successfully enter and thrive in the world. That is why each of us is here. Whether you are a parent, whether you are a teacher, whether you are a board member, whether you are a central staff member, oftentimes, we get lost in the minutia of adultism, of what we need, what makes us happy, what is going to move my agenda, that we fail to realize that the situation, the interactions, the decisions that are being made should be student-driven. So as I have been meeting with people and understanding how things are working, I was told but most, most people tell you when, it's, when you, in, in any superintendent program or leadership program, the first couple of months, you sit back, you observe, you do nothing, right? So I, I came in saying, well, let me just sit back. Let me listen. Let me look. Let me do nothing. But that's not who I am. If I see something that's not right, if I see a way for me to support and do the work that's gonna benefit children, I have to do something. I'm compelled to do something. So as I heard tonight, this idea of we are failing them, I heard you say that, and I felt that you meant it. And I believe you. Whether we want to acknowledge 
the fact of what the data says by saying that data does not matter, test scores do not matter, that is not reality. Because that information tells people what you know. I, hear, I heard the word awareness come up multiple times today. We need to make sure that people are aware. And they say people perish for lack of knowledge. So tonight's presentation is to provide you a glimpse of knowledge, of information that you may not be aware of, that I think that you need to be aware of because it will create that level of urgency to do something different because what we have now is not working. And behind those numbers, or the numbers that we're gonna talk about, our children's lives, our family legacies. And today is not, information is not to talk about who did what, who did, to point a finger, to judge. That is not what I'm here to do. I'm here to give you information as to what compelled me to make, as the leader of the district, to think about, to think differently, to think outside of the box, to make sure that we are doing what is best for children. So I have a new mantra. My staff knows it, they hear it all the time. It's called clear is kind. Renee Brown, clear is kind. As, I've, as, I, as I had meetings with teachers, I have meetings with my staff members, they say we are, there are a lot of systems that are inconsistent. There's no consistency. There's no communication. There is no clarity. That has to change. So tonight's presentation is to discuss a topic that's been in the streets. Anyone who knows me know I'm myself all the time. I can't be anybody else. So I know there has been a lot of talk some misinformation that's been communicated. So I wanna give you the real information from the person themselves because I am the person, if I have a question, I'm going to ask you so that you can give me the information as opposed to what happens sometimes. So I had the opportunity to meet with every principal, every school team, students. I have a few more, high, I have the high school to get to parents, we first schedule and healers, because we had to reschedule, to glean some information from them. I sat with Dr. Whiting, middle school principal, and let me start by saying that I think that Dr. Whiting is dynamic. Because I, I, I don't want the misinformation that's going around. I want her to know that I think she's a dynamic leader. I think she cares intensely for her children. I think she is committed to that school. I think she lives and breathes the work of that school. Them are her babies, as, as the word that you all used. Um, I think she's an instructional leader. I think she is a dynamic leader. I think, unfortunately, the dynamic to which she is engaged in right now does not set her or the school up for success. And that is my beginning position. As a superintendent, as a principal, as a teacher, our roles are to remove the barriers that prevent success. And that requires sometimes for us to think differently, to try a different lesson, a different approach, a different model, per se. And after meeting with Dr. Whiting and, and her sharing with me her own concerns when she was initially brought on about the magnitude of the undertaking of having a middle school with 1,400 plus children and one leader. She shared that with me. And I began to think, well, what can I do to help the leader and the students and families who are being impacted by the model of the school, not the leadership of the school, not the teachers of the school, but the model of the school. 
Everybody follow me so far? We all clear? All right. It's on. Maybe, hope it didn't die on me. So our, our objective tonight, because this is what I do. I do PD. I, I'm, 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 a, I'm a model for you all teaching today that I can teach. My objective is to provide historical context of the middle school structure, provide and discuss historical and current data points from various stakeholders that support a new structure model, provide rationale and benefits of dual leadership model, and provide information and clarity on intended new middle structure. Here's the agenda, the what, the why, and the how. We're gonna talk about the demographics of the school, a little bit of history, why data does matter, data points, dual leadership rationale, dual leader benefits, structure, next steps, and resources. So here's a current breakdown of the ethnicity of our students at the middle school. 70% are Hispanic, 4% are white, 3.6% are Asian, 19% black, 2.6 multiple categories. We have it broken down by fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh and eighth, each individual ethnicity and race. I'm not gonna go through those. But in the fifth grade, there are 375 students, 352 sixth graders, 336 seventh graders, 365 eighth graders for a total of 1,428 students. We have a further breakdown of male to female, multilingual learners, 17% in the middle school, special education, 20% of 1,428 students are special education identified. And 64% of those students have free or reduced lunch. Any questions on the data so far? Again, same information, just in a pie chart so people can see the visual of it. But I wanna add 21% of those students with chronic absenteeism just data, just the reality. So let's take a, a, a trek back. In 2000, between 2000 and 2010, there were nine total principles where there were two principal structures, a dual leadership structure. There were three school principals at the five and six uh, level and six school principals at the seventh and eighth grade level. In 2011, the two schools were combined. They became one school with one principal and four vice principals. Between 2011 and 2024, seven total principals in 13 years. That data is telling you something. To have that amount of turnover in that time lets you know that something is a problem. Something is not working. A total of 16 principles in 24 years. So, yes, passion provides purpose, but data drives decisions. So let's look at some of the data. In our fifth grade, between 2022 and 2023, 97% of our children did not meet expectations. In sixth grade, 86% of our children did not meet expectations. In seventh grade, 88% did not meet expectations. In eighth grade, 88% did not meet expectations. Information you may not have been aware of. Let's break it down further. Students with disabilities. 
fifth grade, 99% of students' disabilities did not meet expectations. Sixth grade, 95%. Seventh grade, 99%. Eighth grade, 97%. So what you said is correct according to the data. Socioeconomic disadvantage. You can go through the numbers for those, but I want to talk about multilingual learners. 100%. 100%. 100%. Ninety-seven percent, and I can go down to each individual group, but the, you, you got the overall data from each of those groups. ELA stronger, a little better. ELA, we had less students not meeting expectations. So fifth grade, we had sixty-four percent not meeting, seventy-seven for the sixth grade, seven percent for the fifty for the for the fourth, seventh grade, forty-seven percent for the eighth grade. And just to be mindful, Dr. Whiting knows the data. Dr. White has created, created a plan of action for the data. So she is not, we've had conversations about the data. For, for people who think I'm sitting up here just showing, no, we have, I just want to be very clear. We have been in conversation about this information. And her team, thankfully, have been working diligently to address this behavior. I mean, uh, data, excuse me. <laughs> We're going to talk about that in a second. Um, so for students with disabilities, again, same, same patterns, 95%, 95%, 85%, 89%, multilingual learners, 100%, 100%, 90%, 88%, not meeting, and I can go through the groups, I'm going to, just for time's sake. Then we start thinking about chronic absenteeism. So for fifth grade, there's an average of 18.3% students being absent, and that's only for right now. For the 137 days that we have been in school, 18.3% of students have not been in school. 21.4% for grade six, 21.7% for grade seven, 23.9% for grade eight. And again, we're not even through the end of the year. This is a problem. Have it broken down by ethnicity. Our black and Hispanic students are higher, slightly, than the others, but you, you get the gist. Same data. In 2022-23, there were 2,600 disciplinary infractions, 2,600 total infractions. So for people who are wondering why I am addressing the middle school as a priority, this data, I didn't just walk in to say, oh, let me just do something to up upheaval the whole district on purpose. These are children's and families lives. Right now we're at 1,557 total infractions. Attendance, tar but tardy specifically. If you look at how the, the middle school, the average, tar I, can't wish, I wish I had a little pointer. If you look at the shaded box, look at the middle school, they have 154 average tardies. Look at the high school, they have 51, and the high school has more students than the middle school. That is three times the amount of the middle, of the high school. I met with teachers, and I, don't, I, never, I never meet with anybody by myself on purpose. So I met each, each teacher meeting I had, there was either one of the assistant superintendents, either, either Ms. Marks or Ms. Parchment in attendance. And they can attest to this information being accurate. Teachers said, when we were in two buildings, there would be a big difference. We need to be back to where we started. Parents felt better about students just transitioning to a five, six school. 
We need support and advocate for special education and bilingual students. They are looked over, especially when there are too many kids. Wish list item for the teacher, for the parent, teacher, excuse me. Two different buildings due to fifth grade plummet in their data. The students are coming to us with four different philosophies of learning from the elementary schools. They are all thrown in here with no real transition. Our fifth graders have a difficult time adjusting because it's so different from elementary. That's from the teacher meetings. Student meetings in the hallway. It is super crowded. You never know what can happen because it's so many people. Pride, passion, and purpose. Some people don't know what it means and we don't know how to do it. Make the bell times longer because it takes a long time to get from one side to the other and then I'm marked late and get detention. But it's not my fault because the hallways are overcrowded. Some classes challenge me to think and others do not. Depends on the teacher. Parent meetings. Too many students, so I'm considering taking my students out. We need to develop a culture of going above and beyond and the extra mile. Separating the grades sounds like a great idea because something different needs to be done. Provide more teacher development so that they can support and build a more positive culture. Communication on what is available for all kids is a challenge that needs to get better. Schools has too many kids for one administrator. We need to start holding people accountable. That's the data. Currently, Hackensack Middle School has the amount, we are the second largest middle school in New Jersey. There are 53 middle schools in New Jersey that serve grades five through eight. The average enrollment of these school is 574 students. That's the average. The largest middle school in New Jersey is Williamstown Middle School in Monroe Township, Gloucester County, with approximately 1,800 students. And guess what? William, Williamstown Middle School has a co-principal model. So have we set the school up for success? That's a question for us to figure out. Do we keep going because it's what we do? Is that the answer? Because I, sometimes we don't fail to realize because we think about our own situation. If my child was one of those individuals in those numbers, I would have a problem. And for anyone to not think that it's not a problem, I have questions because it may not be yours, but if we're all here for children, then we have a responsibility to figure out something different and better for our kids. So some of the rationale items, we've seen the data. Uh, we know there's an idea of, of the building administrator and teacher capacity as an area of focus that all of our new leaders, or all of my new leaders, because they're new to me, are gonna be prioritizing instructional leadership and culture focus, meaning that they're gonna be going into classrooms. We just talked about feedback today to support teachers, to do the work that build teacher capacity, the support that you all need to go into to different spaces. Dr. Uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Whiting can't get into all of those classes. She can't meet with all of those teachers. This, given the fact that she has all of this other data to address, when is that happening? When? They talked about the entry plan for fifth grade. You can't concentrate on that when you're worrying about fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. And guess what? There's an eighth grade strategy that has to happen too because there should be some transition as they're going from eighth grade to ninth grade. When is there time to do that? Too many students and staff to effectively supervise and support. Going back to what I was saying a second ago, we're asking, evaluations are yes, evaluative, but the intention of them are to be a support because you should be getting feedback, you should be getting resources, 
You should be getting information to build you, giving, giving strategies. How can one person do that with this magnitude of a bill? It's not sustainable because Dr. Whiting has a life too. She has a family. She has things that are important to her as well. This is not sustainable. Intense focus on two grade levels will allow us the will allow them the opportunity to really be able to have a digestible but sustainable workforce uh, and concentration. We've known there have been some challenges with the scheduling, but again, Dr. Whiting was left to figure that out. And that by himself was a Herculean task. Overwhelming workload for administrators and the staff. And now we're also hearing that there's charter school registration increasing because people are saying, I can't deal with this. I need to go somewhere else. And we want to keep our students in public schools. We want to create amazing schools that they want to come in and stay in and thrive. So what's the benefit of the dual leadership? You get to personalize the programs. You get to know fifth and sixth grade really, really well. The teachers really, really well. The curriculum really, really well. Customize it to, to meet the individual needs of those groups. Culture development. It's hard developing culture in a building of 500 people. <laughs> Imagine trying to develop a culture in a building filled with 2,000 people. It's challenging. Teacher development, because now I have less teachers, I can really zero in on identifying where support needs, tailor my professional learning to meet those individual needs as well. Curriculum implementation. Where I was previously, it was expected that every leader know the curriculum inside and out. Because if you don't, how can you come in and provide support or evaluate anybody if you don't know the curriculum. So why is it that the middle school leader has to know five, six, seven, and eighth grade curriculum? On top of all the other jobs I just said that they got. It divides so another piece we're talking about today is the expectation that schools are monitoring student progress. And I will be transparent. When I came here, I asked data questions because that's my training. That's what instructional leaders do. I want to know where we are, what the plan is, what's the next steps. When we check in back in, Just if, I, if, I, if I want to lose weight, I start with whatever my, my current amount is. I implement the strategy I'm going to do. I'm going to lift weights. I'm going to run two miles a day. I'm going to check back in four, one, four weeks later to see, did I lose anything? And if not, OK, I need to change my eating habit next month. That's what we do. You check in. When is the time for a particular leader in this, in this current model to supervise and monitor the data on every data point I just mentioned? Where the MLLs are. What's happening with our special education teachers? I mean, students. What's our chronic absentee data? What's happening with our benchmark assessments? What's happening with our dibbles? I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just throwing from nothing. You know what I mean? I'm just, I'm, you, you get where I'm going. You get where I'm going. You get where I'm going. How are you monitoring? Because progress monitoring is the expectation of every school leader. It's called having your hand on the pulse. When someone's asking you the question, you should know. You shouldn't be guessing. If I'm saying, how, how do we think our students are going to perform on the NJSLA this year? I don't know. How do you not know? What have you been using to give you any indication that where your students have mastered standard A, B, or C? That should be happening. But you can't do that in the current model that we have. Dividing the workload is a key piece. Student safety and attendance, we talked about that. Transitionary programs for fifth grade and eighth grade. 
and cohesive structures supporting and sharing of ideas and best practices. My uh, elementary uh, uh, leaders, they get to talk about elementary stuff. Because there's four of them. Our middle school person is talking to the high school person. And to be clear, high school is very different than middle school. Middle schools are not intended to be high school model. Because in high school, we have a million different classes and content is very programmatically and developmentally. Middle school children, as we know, are very special. We love them. I can say it because I was a middle school principal. I was a middle school teacher, all the above. So we know it's something special about middle school children. And they need another layer of support. Let's just say that. So the dual leadership role creates the opportunity to have tailored decision making for your particular grade level, flexibility and resource allocation based upon the need of your grade level, being able to engage in a data driven approach to improve efforts at the school level, grade level focus, personalization. You can provide personal attention, creating an environment where there are individual needs being met and addressed for the teachers and the students. Targeted interventions that specifically uh, focus on your grade level is another area. Improve academic performance because you can be in classrooms more, provide extra resources, progress monitor, make adjustments, do what you need to do because now you have the time and the ability to do so. Behavior support um, as well because when certain structures are in place, you have less issues and then enhanced learning environments. So those are kind of, uh, I could talk about professional development, increased accountability, all those pieces. So let's talk about some of the misconceptions that I've heard <laughs> about the model. No principal will be reporting to any other principal in this model. Let me say it again for the people in the back. No principal will be reporting to another principal. They will be supervised by Ms. Andrea Parchment, both leaders. The, 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 the mantra is still pride, passion, and purpose. That is the mantra. That is what we ascribe to believe in as our middle school model. Each individual Principal will supervise and support and evaluate their staff. They will monitor and implement the curriculum for their grade levels. They will provide professional learning opportunities for their specific teachers. They're going to develop a school culture for their specific school. They're going to build and facilitate, whether it be the elementary plan coming in or the eighth grade plan going out. They're going to monitor and support instructional teams. That's your teacher teams your instructional leadership team and know those well. They're going to progress monitor and analyze the data for their specific grade levels. They're going to develop specific goals for those grade levels. They're going to manage their own individual school budget and tailor their programs and activities to those grades. The only sharing that will happen is the sharing of space, specific staff members, whether they be like the specials, uh, sports, absolutely. Any SEL services that are in the building will be uh, uh, accessible and available to every child in the building. And we're asking that they come together to do assemblies, plays, all those wonderful, beautiful things that have already been in place. And for those who were requesting research and all that kind of good stuff, I got that for them as well. So I just wanted to make sure that I get to say what it really is, as opposed to what people have said that they think it is. The intention of this is to address the fact that our students deserve the opportunity our leaders and our staff members also deserve the opportunity to provide the services that they want to give, but sometimes they just cannot because of the constraints that they are placed in 
due to the model that we currently have at the middle school level. And that is what I would like to conclude with. So we will now move into executive session. So be it resolved that the Hackensack Board of Education determines it necessary to meet in executive session on Wednesday, March 20th, 2024 to discuss legal, personnel, student-related matters, HIB reports, negotiations, and other confidential matters, and be it further resolved that these matters will be made public when the need for confidentiality no longer exists. Um, May I have a motion to go into executive session? Motion. Thank you, Mr. Stein. We have a second from Ms. Cordero Outen. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? And there are none. It is 8.22. We hope to be out in an hour.
Um, I need a motion, please, to extend our motion. Meeting. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Um, all those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed. All right. Uh, motion carries. Uh, Mr. Stein. Okay. And everyone. All right. We'll be. It's much appreciated. Let me get my. I'm here. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Dory. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Listen. It's a lifesaver right now, Miss Dory. It's like my sugar levels. Yeah, but chocolate. All right, are we ready? All right, welcome back. Miss Dory, welcome back. <laughs> we know who loves us. She never left. I know. <laughs> she was sleeping on the chair right across. Okay. We, everybody ready? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, okay. Be it resolved that the Hackensack Board of Education approves the regular meeting minutes on March 20th, 2024, as submitted. May I have a motion? I will offer. Thank you, Mr. Stein. A second? A second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. Motion carries. And we will move on to personnel. Sure, that's, that's you. Okay, good evening. Be it resolved that the Hackensack Board of Education upon the recommendation of the superintendent approves the following personnel actions a1 a through j all right may i have a miss cordero out and made a motion can i have a second second thank you mr carroll uh roll call pl please yes. uh, mr carroll yes Ms. harris yes mr martin yes Mr. Powell is here or no? Okay. Ms. Pringle? Yes. Ms. Somerville? Yes. Mr. Stein? Yes. Ms. Cordero Alton? Yes. Mr. James Victory? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Moving on to policy. Policy, be it resolved that the Hackensack Board of Education, upon the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools, approves the first reading of the following policy, use of artificial intelligence program and learning. Um, also for clarity, this is going to maintain as an evolving document. So as the intelligence um, evolves, as will this policy. So P5705 for the first read. In addition to that, there is also B2, which is for 23 policies and regulations as their second read. 
So all of those were read the last board meeting. So 23 for a second read. All right. So we have a motion by Ms. Cordero Alton. Can I have a second? A second. Thank you, Ms. Somerville. Is there any discussion on any of these items? Hearing none, Ms. Singh, will you do a roll call, please? Yes. Uh, Mr. Carroll? Yes. Ms. Harris? Yes. Mr. Martin? Yes. Uh, Ms. Pringle? Yes. Ms. Somerville? Yes. Mr. Stein? Yes. Ms. Cordero Alton? Yes. Mr. James Rickery? Yes. Motion passes. All right. Mr. Uh, Mr. Martin, curriculum, please. Okay, I'd like to uh, motion forward curriculum of C1 through C13, uh, highlighting uh, C8, um, the exception of the Advanced Placement International Baccalaureate of um, Courses Expansion Grant for the amount of $65,419. And uh, also um, highlight C9, uh, accepting the advanced placement of African American Studies grant in the amount of $12,305. And highlight number 13, the Health Awareness Regional Program of Hackensack University Medical Center to provide health promotion to the Hackensack Public Schools for the 2023-24 and 24-25 school year at no cost to the district. That's it. If I can just clarify, it's yes. C1 through C14? Um, I think you said 13. I, I did say 13. I'm, I'm sorry. Yes, thank you. Yeah, 14. All right. So we have a, it, yeah. a motion from Mr. Martin. Can I have a second, please? Second. So. Uh, thank you, Ms. Cordero Alton. Is there um, any discussion on these items? All right, hearing none, will you take a roll call, please, Ms. Singh? Yes. Mr. Carroll? Yes. Ms. Harris? Yes. Mr. Martin? Yes. Uh, Ms. Springwell? Yes. Ms. Somerville? Yes. Mr. Stein? Yes. Ms. Cordero Alton? Yes. Mr. James Victory? Yes. Motion passes. All right, moving on to finance, uh, Mr. Carroll. Okay, I make a motion to move D1 through D9, highlighting D6 and D7, which is um, the audio and video system upgrades to the middle school, the middle school cafeteria, and D8, which is the district's internet, and also D9, a grant who uh, awarded a grant for mental health. Uh, very good. We have a motion from Mr. Carroll. Do we have a second? Thank you, Mr. Stein. Any discussion on those items? Uh, just to say that I will abstain from D5. Okay. From uh, just D5. D5. Just from D5. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Um, all right. Can we have a roll call, please? Okay. Um... Ms. Carroll? Yes. Ms. Harris? Yes. Mr. Martin? Yes. Ms. Pringle? Yes. Ms. Somerville? Uh, All except D5. Everything except D5. Okay. Except D5. Mr. Stein? Yes. Ms. Gordira Alton? Yes. Mr. James Vickery? Yes. Motion passes. All right, buildings and grounds. Nothing. Um, well, we have one, so we have oh, to yeah. pass it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're um, the fundraiser. I'll make a motion to move uh, building grounds E1, mm -hmm. which is a standard use of this, uh, school facilities. Okay. All right. Um, so we have a motion. Can I have a second? Second. Thank you. Um, a uh, roll call i'm not sure we have. Okay. all those in favor aye. say aye. aye any no's there are none any abstentions there are none okay um very good and we have a um f 
community relations? Uh, so for community relations, we met twice before our meeting today. So we met March 21st and April 11th. It was a very productive meeting where we discussed certain um, things that are going on. We've had, um, I sent summary reports over to um, the trustees. Uh, we've had administrators from the high school come and present about the alternative program and a hot topic that was discussed both March 21st and April 11th was our pre-K registration. Um, we do look forward to our next meeting, which will be in May. It's already scheduled and for June. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, and there's nothing to vote on. And then um, <coughs> moving on to old business. Does, Anyone have any old business that they need to hear for? Other than myself, no. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm not going to make comment about that. Um, thank you for lightening the mood. Um, moving on to new business, is there any new business anyone needs to bring before the board tonight? Hearing none, we will move on to board comments. All right. Um, let's see. We will start with Mr. Martin. All right. Um, first, I wanted to congratulate, I'm not here, of course, but uh, all the uh, teachers that were uh, award, that received their award today. Um, that's what uh, it's all about. Uh, we appreciate what they do as well as um, the supporting teams in the uh, school district and everyone else. But especially uh, them, they did an outstanding job thus far and uh, we're looking to support them and keep them, um, um, give them whatever they need. Um, other than that, uh, nope, that's it. All right, thank you. Mr. Stein. Uh, very quickly. Um, I attended the uh, Little Shop of Horrors uh, play by the high school. It was wonderful. Um, I also, thanks to Ms. Ms. Pringle, uh, attended the first flag football game where Hackensack destroyed Tina. Uh, <laughs> but it was, these girls are athletic. I, I was very impressed. Um, other than that, I wish those in the audience a very decent pace up um, to all the members of the audience. No, that's it. Thank Everybody you. have a good night. Ms. Harris. What's left? Uh, good evening. Uh, so yes, just to reiterate, uh, congratulations to all the teachers that received Teacher of the Year, Educational Service Professional of the Year. Um, Honestly, I know a lot of people have reiterated a lot of these things, but even as an educator, you always find these people to be your go to. These people are people who inspire you, who you say, wow, like, yeah, they are team team workers. They are good in collaborating with others. They are the light in your buildings. So huge shout out to them. And I also want to shout out the administrators who gave those great speeches and great stories that they told about their staff. I think it's just a wonderful touch to not just say, okay, yes, they just check these boxes and they meet the criteria. It's about the real actual examples that they do. And I'm sure those are just one out of the many things that they have done for their buildings. So thank you so much for everything that you do. Um, thank you for keeping our students engaged. Thank you for having empathy for our students. You know, you spend your students, our, well, the students that we send to you are in your care longer than they are home with us, right? So we want these good people to be with our students. Um, last but not least, it is Autism Awareness Month, and it is also a special um, time for me because my son, he's a child um, with autism. And I've had the pleasure of the teachers who actually, and paras who were actually honored tonight, were some of my son's teachers. And I literally reiterated and said, you are such a fountain of information. You were such a great inspiration to me as a parent when I didn't know where to go. So I'm so happy that these people were acknowledged, 
for all the hard work that they do. Um, and for autism awareness, uh, if there was an advice that I could give to a parent who's just walking into this world of special education, walking into the world of having a child with a disability, I would say, ask questions. Find a, a network of people that have the same vision as you for your child. Don't ever settle for what other people tell you. You keep going and asking questions because there's so much potential for your child to move forward in life. So never stop. Um, and congratulations to Mr. Barjum, I believe that's his name for the SOAR award, right? Is that, is that his name? His last name? I know it's a little nope. long one, right? That was his first name. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but congratulations. Um, I have seen him at the school. I didn't realize that that was him um, in his regular school clothes, but congratulations and good night, everyone. Thank you so much. All right. Um, Mr. Carroll. Congratulations to all the honorees tonight. Keep inspiring and doing what you do. Thank you. All right, Ms. Pringle. Um, Mark, thank you for attending. My daughter's number eight, so make sure next game y'all go to. Um, we have to see how we can announce it more because there was not enough comment support out there that for their first game, very first game, 26 to 6, <laughs> their first game. Um, my daughter got injured last Friday. They played against Ridgewood. That was a challenge for them because the Ridgewood um, team is the champion. They're the champions, but they did pretty good. Um, Layla should be turn returning back to school on um, Monday, hopefully. Um, uh, and congratulations to all the honorees. I'm proud of um, all the students. Um, I'm glad that my daughter um, is a student in this town. I see. Uh, the past good things, the teachers, the support and everything, and it seems like it's gonna be brighter going forward. Y'all know I don't talk that much, and everything else they said, and um, good night. <laughs> Thank you. Ms. Somerville? So good evening, everyone, or good night, everyone. Um, first and foremost, it was lovely seeing a crowded room. We don't, we don't get to see that too often these days. So, you know, don't let it be that we're coming out for an event, right? Just show up to support your board, support your students. Second one is to everyone that received an award today, congratulations, um, well-deserved. Um, education um, is the key, and for you guys turning up every day with all the lovely comments we heard to making sure that our students are supported, they feel safe, and they're educated is, you know, that's what we need, that's what we want, that's what we ask for, right? So definitely. Um, Natasha, thank you as always for the student report. Love the red hair. I seem to be doing something different. Again, I would like to, uh, quickly, I would like to take a moment to express my sincere appreciation to Hackensack, especially Hackensack High School. So back in March, we had the Unsung Hero event, and uh, we spoke to Dr. Brickbride, we spoke to Mr. Montesano. We needed photographers and we needed a singer for the event, right? This is, was sponsored by the New Jersey School Board Association and the Bergen County School Board Association, and we did not have representation. And as they always do, Hackensack stepped up to the table, right? Dr. McBride and Mr. Montesano sent the ladies and gentlemen from the photography team. They were there, and they also sent Michelle Galvis, who came to do the national anthem. Mm. The photography team was phenomenal. They were all over the place, they were taking pictures, but the nicest thing about the whole entire thing was just the professionalism of the students that were there. You would have thought they were professional photographers who were getting paid to do a job. They were phenomenal, and that's what we like to see, right? You always can tell when a Hackensack student shows up someplace, right? They know how to present themselves. They know they're there to do the work, and they do the work professionally and wonderfully, and we're thankful for that. So I'm gonna take a moment of liberty to kind of like step out of my board and step into my other board duties, but, um, Dr. McBride, I didn't get a chance for Michelle to come in, so on behalf of the New Jersey School Board Association and the Bergen County School Board Association, I have a certificate and a gift 
card for her. And if you can make sure that gets to her, I would definitely um, appreciate it. The, the next thing is I'd like to say thank you to the Hackensack Middle School, Miss um, Cruz and Dr. Whiting for inviting Miss Pringle and myself to the Women of Worth um, breakfast. I think uh, Trustee Cordera Outen and Trustee Harris were not able to make it, but we did show up and it was a lovely time. The stories that the kids wrote, especially the two ladies that talked about their moms. All, I mean, almost tissue time, right? And we're all sitting there. I'm trying to pretend I'm not crying. And no, I'm not crying. I have allergies. But these kids were so good. They were so phenomenal. The stories were so well written. I mean, again, a testament to when you invest in your kids, right? When you put time in, when you put the effort in, you get nothing but rewards out on the other end. And last but not least, I promised the last time I was here, and I want to take a special moment to say thank you to Miss Story, right? So I told you I brought sweets for my sweet. Miss Story, you are a beautiful example of what kindness is, what grace is, right? And no matter how long and boring these meetings go on, how much we all pontificate and drag it out, you are a true diehard <laughs> comet. You stay till the bitter end. So again, Miss Story, I, I love you, I appreciate you, I am thankful for you, and there should be more of you in the world. So I brought you a treat today, and I'm gonna get up and walk over to you to say thank you so much for all of you. So again, th again, I want to express my thank you to everybody. Um, hang in there. I mean, better things to come for you know for Hackensack. So we're on the right path. We're on the right track. Let's keep moving forward with positivity and love. Thank you, everybody, and good night. Thank you, Ms. Grayerouten. Yes, thank you. Um, so I've been doing a little bit of uh, spring cleaning and catch up with regards to the newspapers and mail clippings, newspaper clippings and mail. Um, and I am not too sure whether or not this individual was acknowledged, but the Hackensack Chronicle uh, always marks a student of the week. And Hackensack was actually fortunate enough to have a senior highlighted in the Chronicle for the month of February. And his name is Carlos Chuki Minchala. And just the snippet that they provided is that Carlos is able to successfully balance his rigorous honors advanced placement course load with an ambitious extracurricular calendar. Carlos is a three time member of the all county band for his tuba playing ability, and he was accepted to the Cali pathways music program at Montclair State University. So unfortunately, if we was not acknowledged at that time, I do want to make sure that if you know him, let him know we are aware, we are grateful, and we are proud. Um, another uh, catch up, this was from Hackensack Chronicle for the month of March, and it is our very own uh, Tony Jackson, who contributes um, to the uh, painted rain barrel tomorrow and in sight. And uh, he had a barrel that he assisted in designing, and they had an article, and he is talking about all that good work, which, as we know here in Hackensack, we will be participating in with the school um, in, in doing something similar. So to Mr. Jackson, um, for all that you already do within our school district, with our students, I, I absolutely applaud your dedication as a community member as well and by doing all that good work um, when you're not spending time with your family. Uh, a couple of other things I want to, just as all other board members did this evening, to uh, everyone who received an award tonight, I think it was absolutely well deserved. I, I feel like maybe there needs to be a mentorship program that like you got nominated, you got this award for the next six months, your job is going to be to mentor um, other teachers who should also be excelling um, and are probably almost there to get the next one. Um, I think that the outpouring of 
their friends, family, and, and coworkers this evening was amazing. Um, and I think it really shows and speaks to the type of support you can you can have here in our district as a teacher, uh, as a para, as as the amazing um, Hackensack Middle School uh, custodian. Uh, very sweet. I loved Mrs. Whitaker's story about how she got him here. So um, I thought that was great. Uh, for me personally, I, I, I would like to give a shout out to um, guidance counselor, uh, Cara Barizano. Um, if she has to deal with many more parents that are like me, I am so sorry. Um, I have a relationship with her since my son uh, started at Hackensack High School. And um, pretty sure I've not been the easiest and lucky for her she is also guidance counselor now to my my daughter um so Kara I do believe that is absolutely well deserved um one of the things someone said was uh that the students wished that she didn't have to do all the other stuff so that she could do more of this and what I would like to say is that I appreciate how you still manage to do all the other stuff while still absolutely engaging with the students. I adore her and I know that my daughter thinks she's very easy uh, to talk to. Um, also would like to say thank you and congratulations to Mr. Bennett at NKP. I do not know you at all, but um, watching you receive the award this evening from the phenomenal Miss Whitaker um, and NKP being my daughter's uh, elementary school. I know what it's like. I've seen what was and I definitely felt your appreciation for being a recipient this evening. And I think that you are probably going to be doing amazing things uh, going forward. So I, I wanted to let you know that I really already felt the difference. Um, Dr. McBride, it, it's not lost on me and it seems like hours ago now because it was. Um, your presentation was amazing. Uh, I would really like the community to understand that what you saw this evening in that presentation was absolutely delivered to you in a most subtle way while being right on target. And I want to, again, thank all the teachers and staff who were upset last month about having to get that information. I hope you now realize the reason behind the ask. How it was delivered to you, the community tonight, and to other board members who requested more information, that was soft compared to how it was delivered to us a month ago. So take stock in it, clear is kind. There's a reason why that saying keeps getting passed around. It's because it's true. Facts are your friends. I hope that everybody looks at that and wonders to themselves, is my student, is my scholar in that 90% who's not efficient, who's not proficient? I know I worry. And when you see those numbers in that way, I personally don't find that there's any room to question further why we're trying to move in the direction that we're moving. If you have questions, bring them up now. Again, it is what it is. We have to live in the reality of what we have. And at the end of the day, that is for the student. So I really hope that if you have questions, you get them answered as soon as possible so that we can move on and continue doing the good board business that still needs to get done. The last thing I would like to talk about are some comments that were made earlier this evening. As I even begin to address, my ears are hot, my heart is pounding. I was actually so upset earlier this evening before going into executive session that I was on the verge of tears. I was disgusted. The comments, the cryptic nature of the comments, I'll say it again, clear is kind. 
the cryptic nature of the accusation, the cryptic nature of an apology. Our board email addresses are available to all. If there is something that you think we're not being talked to about, or we're not being told, please do me the courtesy of sending out an email to the entire board. You come here, you talk like it's information that is not being shared and nobody really understands. So again, clear is kind, inform me. If there's a question to be asked, I will assuredly ask it. But please don't come here and make a spectacle, what I deem a spectacle of the members who sit on this board doing this work for the good reasons. I, I didn't appreciate it. And I will leave that at that. Again, my email address is there. My cell phone number is there. Please reach out. Let me know what I don't know so that it can be addressed. That's all, thank you. Thank you. So um, this is one of my favorite nights um, of the year when we get to celebrate our teachers. Oh, no, well, no, I'm, I'm uh, yeah, it could be our favorite morning coming up. Um, but, um, and bar barbecue doesn't hurt. Um, but I do, I will say, it's one of the things that um, makes the work that all of the people that sit here and that work in the background, which is where we all should be, um, it makes it worth the background work, right? To see, to, for the teachers to get to be recognized because they're very rarely recognized for what they do. And, our, and, and then our um, education service professionals as well. So I'm thankful for all the work that they do and um, the countless lives that they touch because it's not just always the life that you touch in a classroom. And I look at Jennifer when I say, or Miss Harris when I say that because it's in the lives that they touch and it just, it goes on and on. Um, teachers change the world. And um, so we're grateful and thankful for all that they bring to our district and into the world. Um, Autism Awareness Month is, you know, I, I find it interesting that even just out of the, well, there are eight members, and I just remembered Lance is on the phone, sorry. We'll come back to you, Lance. Um, he is. Um, out of the, the eight members sitting here, there are two of us with uh, children who have autism. And, uh, well, three. And I think it's important to note that um, it impacts lots of families right here in our, in our town, but also in this country and the importance of the awareness and how critical it is that the families that are, um, that have children in them that have autism, the connections with other families and with peers and with all those people around them, that's part of their upbringing and their education and all of their life. Um, you matter in their life too. And so um, our schools matter and our teachers and the students, all of us matter when it comes to all of our students, but especially when we have students with autism, because sometimes socially, it's one of our biggest challenges. And so um, I want us to just really take a minute to really reflect on how important we are in the lives of our kids with autism and how we need to make sure we're intentional to um, think about how we impact 
not only our students, but any um, person with autism in our life that, you know, as they are um, in our sphere of influence. Um, it has been a long night, so I'm not going to keep going. I'm going to let Lance or Mr. Powell speak. He's on um, online. Um, and so we'll hear from him and then we will adjourn. Good night, everyone. <laughs> uh, just, I'll just have a couple of quick words. Just uh, congrats to the flag football team and uh, the story. You're just ever so wonderful. It's always lovely to have you around and we do appreciate you. Thanks for the student report. And uh, I stopped by the track field a couple of days ago. I think it was Monday just to watch the kids practice. And I had a chance to speak to uh, Coach Kavinsky and I watch the way he interacts with the kids and the way he trains our kids. And I just want to give a shout out to him and his, his Michelle and all the track coaches tonight. And he came up to us, he came up to me and he said, thank the board for this lovely, lovely track that you guys put in. So. I just want to let the board know that we are really appreciated and the track athletes and the coaches are just thrilled uh, in regarding to the track that they have. So once again to the board, thank you for what you do. Thank you for your vision in putting this beautiful track in. And uh, thank everyone, custodians, the techs and uh, the, all the administration and everyone, our lovely uh, our board secretary, our attorney, and just want to thank everyone uh, for being there for our students. And I just have one point I would like to emphasize. Dr. McBride, I said it from the beginning, and I'll say it again. Thank you for choosing Akinsack. And I'm going to say it again. Thank you for choosing Akinsack. And I will always say to you, and I see you're a man of vision, great leader, and we needed it. We had a critical juncture in our, you know, in Hackensack's education uh, for our kids. And you're a true leader, and we really appreciate you coming here and taking the time to analyze, break down our data, work with us, guide us, lead us, teach us, inspire us, motivate us, so we can move forward. Our kids really need the help along with our teachers. And with your inspiration and your guidance, I'm sure we uh, do well and we can be an excellent school district. And like you said, when you first came, you believe in excellence. And I have faith in you that our school district will be a district of excellence. And thank you for that wonderful, inspiring, eye-opening presentation. Thank you. And to the board members, I say, it's a pleasure working with you all. Continue to let us work together. A chain is as strong as its weakest link. Let us not be broken. Let us stand together, work together, and we can do great things for the kids of Akinsat. Onwards we go and we'll be successful. Thank you all and have a good night. Thank you, Mr. Powell. May I have a motion to adjourn? Motion. Take that from Ms. Harris by just the look on the face. Oh a second. I got a teacher. Thank you. Uh, motion.